Hi, this is Stan Lyle, and welcome to Master Math's lesson on estimating with fractions. You're going to see some You Do It Now pages within the lesson where we're going to ask you to do a problem. When you get to these, hit the pause button, pull out some paper and pen, and try the problem. When you finish the problem, hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Boy, oh boy, that's a lot of jelly beans. I don't want to count that many jelly beans. That'd take me forever. Well, maybe I could estimate the number of jelly beans there. That, that'd that be a lot quicker. Plus, I don't really need to know exactly how many jelly beans are there. I just need to know approximately how many jelly beans are there. Yep, estimating's the way to go. Learning to estimate well is real valuable. Your mom and dad and your teachers will tell you that if you learn to become a good test taker, you'll benefit from that skill your entire life. And estimating can help you become a good test taker. Let's say you've got a problem about a batting average. Joe was at bat 24 times and made 13 hits. What was his batting average? 153, 368, 541, or 296? Well, Unless you've got a calculator, that's a little hard to calculate. You know it's 13 divided by 24, but 13 divided by 24 is a little hard to do in your head. So if you just had to guess, you'd have a 1 in 4 chance of guessing correctly or a 25% chance of guessing correctly. But a little bit of estimating will increase your odds of getting this question right to 100%. Joe was at bat 24 times and made 13 hits. What was his batting average? Well, 13 over 24, 13 over 24 is about the same as 12 over 24. So we can estimate that 13 and 12 are pretty close to each other. 12 over 24 is a lot easier to divide because 24 is twice 12. So 12 over 24 equals 1 over 2 and 1 over 2 equals .500 or a 500 batting average. Well, the first answer A is .153 and that's a long way from 500 so we can just run a red line through that and eliminate A. It's not A. The same is true for B. The same tr is true for D. So the only one that's close to our estimate is C and if we pick C We've got the right answer. Here's another example of how estimating can be really helpful. Lots of times you need to th estimate whether you've got enough of something. Do you have enough time? Do you have enough money? Well, here's an example. Let's say you have $43 and you want to buy presents for your family. You want to buy, number one, a shirt for your brother that costs $11.85. Two, a tool for your father that costs twenty-one twenty-five, and three, a vase for your mother that costs nineteen ninety-five. Do you have enough money? You've only got forty-three dollars. You don't want to go up to the cashier, have her ring all this stuff in. You give her forty-three dollars, and she tells you you don't have enough money. So it'd be helpful to estimate and make sure that you've got enough money to buy all these presents that you want. Do you think you got enough? Well, let's estimate. The shirt costs eleven eighty-five. Let's estimate that at about twelve dollars, because twelve is going to be a lot easier to add than eleven point eight five. The tool costs twenty-one and a quarter. Well, let's round that to twenty-one dollars, because once again, twenty-one is easy to add. And the vase costs nineteen ninety-five. Well, that's nearly twenty dollars, so let's round it to twenty. So now we got twelve dollars plus twenty-one dollars plus twenty dollars. That's a lot easier to add. That's $53. Do you have enough money? Okay, we like estimating. What would we do if we were estimating with fractions? Well, the trick is to convert the fraction to a number that's easy to work with. Numbers that are easy to multiply, add, subtract, and divide by include 0, a quarter, one-third, one-half, two-thirds, three-quarters, and one. These are just easier to work with than numbers like 51, 50 seconds. All right, 
Well, I got a fraction. How do I round it? How do I come up with an easier fraction to multiply by? Well, there's a couple of rules that will help you. The first is you can try decreasing the numerator. Let's look at 5 eighths. And let's decrease the numerator by 1. 4 eighths. Well, 4 eighths, I can see that that's 1 half, and 1 half is an easy number to multiply by. So let's use 1 half as an estimate or a rounded version of 5 eighths. Now, it's important to remember that we've rounded down. 4 eighths is less than 5 eighths. 5 eighths is 1 eighth more than 4 eighths. So we've round, by using 1 half, we've rounded down. Another rule you could try is to increase the numerator. Once again, let's start with 5 eighths. And let's increase that 5 to a 6. And that gives us 6 eighths. And hopefully you can look at 6 eighths and see that that equals 3 quarters. And 3 quarters is an easy number to multiply by, at least a lot easier than 5 eighths. So let's round it up to 3 quarters. Okay, we can also round fractions by playing with the denominator. We can either increase the denominator or decrease the denominator. Let's try decreasing the no denominator on 3 over 7. If we decrease that 7 to a 6, then our new fraction is 3 over 6. And 3 over 6 is just about a half. And a half is an easy number to multiply by. Now it's important to know that when we change the uh, fraction 3 sevenths to 3 sixths, we were actually making the fraction bigger. We 3 sixths is bigger than 3 sevenths. If you decrease the denominator, you make the fraction bigger. We can also increase the denominator. 5 ninths. Well, let's increase the denominator. The denominator is 9. Let's raise it to 10. And now I've got 5 tenths, and 5 tenths is just about a half. And a half is an easy number to multiply by. But again, it's important to know, did we round up or did we round down? Well, 5 ninths is a little bit bigger than 5 tenths, so we've rounded down by going to 5 tenths. And 1 half will give us an estimate that's a little bit less than the actual number if we multiply by 5 ninths. Try this one, 3 fifths of 80. Now first, you need to remember that when you see of in a problem, like 3 fifths of 80, it's asking you to multiply 3 fifths times 80. Hit the pause button, pull out some paper and a pen, and try this problem. When you get it done, hit the forward button. How'd you do? Well, let's find out. 3 fifths equals about a half. But it's a little bit bigger than a half. So 3 fifths of 80 equals approximately 1 half of 80, or it equals approximately 40. Now the actual answer is going to be a little bit more than 40, because 3 fifths is a little bit more than 1 half. So 1 half times 80 is going to be a smaller answer than the actual answer, 3 fifths times 80. But 1 half is a lot easier to multiply by. So we estimated that 3 fifths of 80 was a number that was a little bit bigger than 40. This time we've got six and a half times two and a half. And we're going to estimate an answer by rounding each of these numbers to a number that's easier to multiply with. So six and a half. Well six and a half equals approximately seven. I don't know that I said this before, but that little squiggly equal sign there means equals approximately. Wherever you see that little double wiggle sign, read it equals approximately. 6 and a half equals approximately 7. But we rounded it up because 7 is a little bit bigger than 6 and a half. So now when we go to round the 2 and an 8, let's try to round it down so that our total estimate is going to be closer to the real answer. 
2 and an eighth. Well, that's just a little bit bigger than 2, so let's round it down to 2. So now we've got 6 and a half, which we rounded to 7. And we've got 2 and an eighth, which we rounded to 2. And then 7 times 2 equals 14. So 6 and a half by 2 and an eighth equals approximately 14. How'd you do on that one? Well, let's find out. Three-fifths times three-eighths. Well, three-fifths is a little bit larger than a half, so let's round three-fifths down to one-half. Three-eighths, well, that's a little bit smaller than a half, but let's round it up to a half. So we're going to round three-fifths to a half, and we're going to round three-eighths to a half, and we're going to change the problem from three-fifths times three-eighths to one-half times one-half in order to estimate. And one-half times one-half is just uh, one times one over two times two or one over four. So three-fifths times three-eighths equals approximately one-quarter. Again, you're much better off if you can round one number up and the other number down. If you round them both up, your estimate will be higher than the actual answer. If you round them both down, then your answer will be lower than the actual answer. Try this one. 2 and 7 eighths times 5 and 1 eighth. Hit the forward arrow when you get done. All right. 2 and 7 eighths times 5 and 1 eighth. Well, let's try rounding both of those numbers. 2 and 7 eighths. Well, 2 and 7 eighths equals just about 2 and 8 eighths. And 2 and 8 eighths equals exactly 3. So we can round 2 and 7 eighths up to 3 and change the first number in the multiplication problem from 2 and 7 eighths to 3. Now, 5 and 1 eighth. Well, 5 and 1 eighth equals almost 5 and 0 eighths. And 5 and 0 eighths is 5. So we can change the second number to 5. And then we've got 3 times 5, which equals 15. Now, you'll notice that we rounded the 2 and 7 eighths up to 3. And we rounded the 5 and 1 eighths down to 5. So our estimate should be pretty close. I hope you feel a lot better now about estimating with fractions, and I also hope you understand how important it is to learn to estimate well. You'll use it all your life. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to mastermath.info. Go to the page with worksheets on it. On the worksheet page, under sixth grade first quarter, you'll see a worksheet entitled Estimating with Fractions. Download and print that worksheet and try your skills by answering the questions. If you have problems, come back and look at this lesson again. And we look forward to seeing you real soon.